Hollywood has always had a special place for science fiction movies, especially those that have to do with aliens. It is no wonder that they have played on the mass obsession with the unknown, especially in the 80s and 90s, and that has resulted in some brilliant alien films. Fans of this genre will definitely recognize the iconic alien movie Species, which was released in 1995 and starred Natasha Henstridge playing the main character Syl, an alien-human hybrid. In this video, we will break down everything we know about Syl, her nature, physiology, powers, and much more. Keep watching. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is Sill's original species, and how did the creature originate? The first installment of the sci-fi horror movie series, Species, introduced the world to Sill, a creature with an irrational desire to reproduce that was created by fusing human and extraterrestrial DNA. In movies and television shows, aliens occasionally visit Earth with the primary intent of engaging in sexual activity and possibly procreating with humans. It appeared that this was the situation with this particularly alluring alien as we watched her go on a rampage across Los Angeles simply because she wanted to have a baby. Syl, however, isn't wholly evil, no matter how high her kill count is in the movie. Her past showcases that she had no hand in her own creation and was, instead, a victim of unethical scientific research, misinformation, and fear, which was made worse by a lack of preparedness for the creature she eventually became. Interplanetary communication that occurred as part of the SETI program, which aimed to make contact with intelligent alien species, is what led to Sill's existence. Now, SETI here stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and was a a covert group working in the United States of America and was funded by the U.S. government. In November of 1974, a group of government scientists sent out a message using radio technology in hopes that any other life form in the universe would come across it and they would respond back. Since these scientists wanted to prove that there was, in fact, life outside Earth, they packed the message with a lot of information, including the structure of the human DNA, a map of the solar system, and other facts about the Earth and life on Earth. Many years later, in 1993, the group of scientists at SETI was finally approached by aliens who sent them a message. The aliens first sent them instructions on how to create an unending supply of fuel. The scientists tested out and Lo and behold, it worked. The fuel was non-polluting and clean burning, and thus, the scientists deemed these aliens to be friendly ones. Thus, when they were given instructions on how to replicate the species' alien DNA and merge it with human DNA, as part of the second message they received, the scientists blindly followed them since they naturally thought that these species that they were conversing with were kind. The scientists created the DNA following the instructions and combined it with human DNA. This new, combined DNA was then injected into 100 human ova. Out of 100, only 7 shown signs of growth and further divided. However, out of the 7, 4 petered out, leaving them with only three. Out of the three, they froze two of them in liquid nitrogen for storage and allowed one to grow. And grow she did. Within days, the ova turned into a fully formed baby and looked deceptively human. The scientists decided to make the baby a girl since they thought that would make the creature docile and easier to control. And they finally named her Syl. The creature grew rapidly and was already resembling an eight to nine year old child within a month. They kept her in a glass dome separated from everyone else and constantly monitored her. However, one day she was deemed too dangerous when the scientists realized that she was capable of dreaming and was having nightmares, so they decided to terminate her. This did not go as planned, as Syl broke out, and, well, the rest is history. Now, while Syl was created by humans, she does hail from a particular species, something we see in the rest of the franchise's movie as well. According to Professor Herman Cromwell, the Magellanic Galaxy, also known as the Large Magellanic Cloud, was the only other location in the universe where carbon-based life had seemingly been found. They were a cancerous race who visited Mars millions of years ago, when its surface was roughly comparable to that of Earth, and wiped out all life before leaving DNA traces in the planet's soil. Apart from this information, they are largely an unknown, sexually aggressive, extraterrestrial race, known as Sills race, that seeks to colonize other planets' sentient civilizations 
procreate with them and eventually wipe them off in order to expand throughout the universe. This species can develop quickly and combine its DNA with the DNA of other living things through mating, reproduction, and other means of genetic interaction. They are an aggressive and predatory species, but as can be seen, they are also quite smart. Considering that we are unaware of their name and their exact location, the mystery surrounding them makes them an even tougher enemy to beat. <laughs> Exploring some peculiar features of the Sill species. The members of this species have both male and female creatures, and they are essentially in the shape of bipedal humanoid. The skeleton-esque, semi-transparent, chitinous bodies of the species are shared by both genders. They have two mandibles in the mouth and tentacles that resemble hair. Additionally, the species also has the capacity to morph into its alien forms in order to adapt to specific circumstances, such as ejecting the spikes in their backs or morphing just their face for a heightened sense of smell. The species can thus easily shapeshift between human and alien form. The species DNA is very adaptable and is continuously changing and mutating, which grants them amazing regenerative skills and makes them immortal in the sense that they can only be terminated by having every last cell in their body destroyed. Otherwise, their limbs and their body parts simply keep regenerating. From what we can tell from the movies, the dominant and unquestionably more threatening member of the species is the female. The films show many generations of the female species, each with a unique appearance and a set of skills. It can be assumed that the species progresses and gets better with each generation as it reproduces, whether it is with humans or other hybrids. But every generation has certain physical traits in common. They are insanely adaptable. It is almost like their race is genetically built to be able to slip into other societies unnoticed. Syl, for example, demonstrates extraordinary cleverness as she merges into society by being able to instantly adjust to her environment. Syl also had a remarkable capacity for picking up information only by touch. She can, for instance, quickly absorb information from entire volumes of books just by touching them. It is never stated how this phenomenon operates. However, all of them have this, or a variation of this ability. The alien DNA also dramatically increases the most fundamental of animalistic impulses, the drive to reproduce. This one, again, is visible all throughout the franchise as we have often seen these aliens in heat and on the hunt for a mate. In addition to these, they usually always have an accelerated growth rate and have far more physical strength than a regular human. They are extremely instinctual and often kill the moment they feel uneasy. Now, just because they look human doesn't mean that any of them are. For Syl and all the others that came after her, the human appearance is actually just a disguise and their true alien shape is a sensual, exotic parody of the human form. Their form is chitinous and reptilian, like xenomorphs in some ways, although it is still clearly humanoid. They often have a mass of prehensile tentacles that they wear as hair when in their full alien form. They also have two sets of teeth, the internal set of which is extremely sharp. They can also retract and expand the long, sharp spines that run up their backs as they please. The alien form of Sill, specifically, can also maintain its breath underwater for a long time. The males are also sexually aggressive, but we haven't seen too many of them in the franchise, so it is tough to tell exactly how they are. However, it is clear that they are obsessed with planting their seed and employ far more violent tactics when in search of a mate. They also have a transition period as they go from being a child to a full-grown adult, and this transition is marked by them forming a large, bulging, slimy, throbbing cocoon. Once they are ready, they emerge from the slimy cocoon as a full-grown member of their species. It is quite gross to watch as the transformation for Sill happens on a train for the first film, but it shows just how different they are from humans. Bet you don't feel as bad about going through puberty now. Interestingly, the majority of the species members that are shown in the movies from the franchise are actually human mutations. 
However, a pure version of the alien species itself has been observed. The alien resembled a tentacled, blobby creature with a long appendage that resembled a mouth and lashed out at anything in its vicinity. The extraterrestrial doubled in size in a matter of seconds due to its rapid growth. However, it died by immolation after a little more than two minutes of life. A female human astronaut who has been exposed to the alien DNA gave birth to a monster that is similar to it. Later, Sarah, who was the child of late Patrick Ross and the sill copy Eve, was the purest of aliens that have been observed. If you want to see a video on Sarah, let us know in the comments. Last but not least, from what we do know about them, it seems that they are a technologically advanced race. This is because the signal that reached Earth is said to have traveled through many black holes, which served to obscure its point of origin. A deliberate move that could mean that they were highly advanced and were used to dupe civilizations in this manner. Even though it is uncertain what stage of technological development the species are currently in, the fact that they have mastered black holes is evidence of their prowess. It is uncertain if the species is currently capable of space travel, but it is said that the original alien species had some sort of spacecraft. It does make sense that a race that is capable of controlling black holes would have also developed advanced space travel. The species may actually be billions of years old, according to one of the characters in the franchise. This makes them extremely scary since their mental capacities are unknown. Yet the human hybrids have demonstrated a rapid learning curve, a capacity for information absorption, and a capacity for the application of acquired knowledge. Phil's Kiss of Death, the Deadly Tongue of This Creature Species debuted near the end of the glossy erotic thriller trend, which was uniquely Hollywood in the 1990s. Species reads as an odd cross between a 1950s creature feature and a Joe Esterhaz written horror flick. The genre was launched to its box office success by Paul Verhoeven's Basic Instinct before nosediving quickly with films like Sliver and Body of Evidence. Sill is the result of the collision of opposing cinematic DNA strands. When she is seductive, she resembles the attractive Natasha Henstridge, while when she is angry, she resembles a semi-transparent hell beast. Since she is the perfect mix of beauty and beast, and her species is rather sexually aggressive, it is not a surprise that even her tongue is a weapon, fondly referred to as the kiss of death by fans. Her tongue can really make you see heaven, and this time, we mean in person. She uses her tongue as her main defensive tool or even weapon when involved with a potential mate, because it is equipped with sharp spines or barbs. She can impale her attacker with her tongue when threatened, and does this generally while kissing since it catches the male off guard, allowing her to finish him off easily. She does so by putting her tongue into the victim's lips from where she is able to penetrate into the victim's skull and pretty much impale pale the cranium, with her tongue coming out of the back of their head, giving rise to her famed kiss of death. From the looks of what happened to the man she picked up at the club in the movie, it is a horrible way to die. <laughs> Even the breasts of this deadly monster serve as weapons. Keeping in line with the erotic theme, even the breasts of this creature serve as weapons. Talk about femme fatale. Unlike a human female, she does not have mammary glands or fat in her breasts. Instead, she has an extra prehensile tentacle that can protrude from her nipples. In full alien state, Syl has the ability to shoot these snake-like tentacles from her breasts, which she utilizes to encircle and suffocate her prey. It appears a bit more graceful in Giger's paintings and sculptures than it does in the finished product. When we see Michael Madsen being lifted off the ground by one of her writhing tentacles, and another time when she drowns a prospective lover in a swimming pool. These special appendages can also be employed in her species mating rituals, as was shown in the second species film. We would probably utilize these tentacles in a less violent manner if we were Syl. For instance, you could use those tentacles to grab the TV remote from the table while still having free hands to consume the crisp. Sounds like a perfect Friday night. Don't go. Please. I want a baby. What? 
How to Sill Reproduce The first film is devoted to Sill's escapades as she roams around Los Angeles in search of a mate. She escapes from the facility and proceeds to wreak havoc while seeking suitable mates. All throughout the film, her plans keep getting foiled as the government constantly tries to track her down. However, what can be understood from her behavior is that she needed human sperm to reproduce, and thus learned how to pick up men from bars and such. A blonde bombshell still did not have any trouble finding men who wanted to do the deed with her. However, she also seemed to have a certain criteria. She only wanted physically healthy men and did not want to procreate with people who had chronic conditions such as diabetes. She was also largely unaware of human behavior and often came across as aggressive. She is finally successful in her mission towards the end of the movie. Arden, one of the people who was helping track Syl down, is eventually seduced by her. They have a successful sexual encounter, after which she kills him and runs away. In a sewer system, she gives birth to a boy just hours later, having gone through labor in the blink of an eye. Her chest starts to split and her abdomen gently swells as she goes into labor with her child. Syl's rib cage separates and splits open just before giving birth, revealing her son. Interestingly, while capable of conceiving children in her pubic region like a typical human female, Syl is shown to give birth via her chest cavity, which splits and opens to allow a fully grown infant to emerge from her. It is still unknown how Syl's race reproduces and what characteristics are handed down. There is no way to be certain due to the species' mutable nature and the wide range of differences in succeeding generations. As far as her son is concerned, he seems to be adjusting to the environment as his mother leaves him in the tunnels. She does so to be able to shield him from the rest of the squad dispatched to murder them. He starts showing signs of a rapid growth by already looking like a young toddler. We even watch him eat a mouse as he gains his bearings and tries to figure out what he is. Unfortunately, he does not last very long as he is killed by being set on fire and dropped into an oil pit just as he was about to assault Dan. How does Syl's regenerative abilities work? Thanks to her unique DNA, Syl has the capacity to quickly recover from any wound, be it a severed limb or broken bone. In one particular scene in the first movie, Syl cuts off her thumb in an attempt to fool the government's hunters into thinking that she is dead, and we see how miraculously her thumb simply grew back. It also seemed like her nerves and cell tissue had a life of their own. Within seconds, she had a completely new thumb. Further, at one point, she got into a terrible car accident and collapsed on the road. She was rushed to the hospital by a good Samaritan bystander, and once there, her body began regenerating her bones, fixing them from the inside and removing any and all scars that she had developed thanks to the incident including large amounts of bruising on her back, broken shoulder blades, and other fractures. This happened right in front of the doctor who was attending to her injuries and caused him to pretty much have a meltdown as he was unable to process just how it could happen. She walked out of the hospital minutes later, completely fine. All of this points to the fact that she was extremely resilient and could pretty much heal any injury. However, in the case her body is completely damaged, such as being burned to death, she appears to be incapable of regeneration as she perished at the end of the first movie. <laughs> is Syl hostile to humans? As can be inferred from her high kill count from the film, she is definitely hostile to humans. However, at various points throughout the film, it is stated that she only kills as an instinct to protect herself. At every point, whenever she feels threatened, she kills without remorse. This is the nature of her predatory species. However, it must be noted that the creature is not essentially evil. In a way, Syl is only trying to fulfill her biological urge. In fact, she's not even aware of who she is, which species she belongs to, and why she has been created. So her having malevolent intentions is simply not possible. In fact, in the second movie, a replica of Syl is created and is named Eve. Eve is made much more docile and controllable than Syl, and is used for various experiments by the scientists as they try to understand where she comes from and what she is. Here, it is seen that she is quite compliant, which means that she is inherently not hostile. Can Syl be destroyed permanently? Well, considering that we know about her extraordinary regenerative abilities, it is definitely not easy to destroy her completely. However, she did die at the end of the first movie, so she can be killed. Likely something that would burn her completely or blasting her head into pieces with a shotgun seems to do the job. 
Even in death, Syl does not truly die, as the movie ends with a rat eating the remnants of her body and developing alien-like abilities, making it a predator as well. Thus, their body tissue has the ability to transform and influence the genetic material of any life form that consumes it as well. Some fictional aliens are friendly, others are hostile, and some want to kind of get to know human beings in a more intimate way altogether. Syl was of the last kind and her exploits are history. Her species is remarkable in many ways and seems to be a sort of apex predator. All in all, it is best to stay away from them since everyone that has come into contact with them has suffered a gruesome death. What do you think about Syl? Tell us in the comment section below. Don't go. Please. I want a baby. What?